Hey guys, how's it going? It is my different username here, and today we'll be talking about a rifle whose own unique take on the bullpup weapon system tries to go beyond that of the standard and exceed in almost everything else and more, creating a pretty decent reputation of being one of the best configurations for bullpup rifle systems overall. And throughout the years of testing in combat, the rifle has been essentially battle proven by the IDF and also numerous other countries who have deployed this weapon to their soldiers as well. So, here we have the IWI TAR-21 Assault Rifle, made out of LEGO. So, the TAR-21, or the Tavor, is the bullpup assault rifle project created by a team over at IMI, or Israel Military Industries, in 1995, which was led by gun designer Zalman Shebs, who envisioned a design to be one of the most ergonomic rifles built for military purposes. And the process for this weapon is really interesting and even supposedly came from a simple napkin drawing one day, and was even almost called the AAR-90. But slowly over the next six years, the rifle progresses to what we see out of it now, completing their first official model of the Tavor in 2001, and later have it manufactured by the newly privatized IWI, or Israel Weapon Industries. Another objective was for this rifle to perform better than that of the M4A1 carbine, and when it passed its trials for the IDF, or Israel Defense Forces, it continued to be used and was later refined in 2003. Following soon, though, were all the new variants for the Tavor that started releasing over time. And in around 2009, eventually these ended up succeeding over the original rifles, taking them out of the need for service overall. And here we have my LEGO rendition of an original military model TAR-21, or at least somewhat original. Most of the time whenever I build a rifle, it's always based off of something like an image or a 3D model, just something that I could always find and use online to build off of. But in this case, I happen to have a real Tavor on me, but this is no military model. No, this is just the Tavor SAR, a civilian version of the refined full-length TAR model. And this rifle was graciously given to me by my father's friend, who's actually a fan of the channel and essentially wanted to see if I could build his rifle out of LEGO. And, well, we're going to take a closer look at this and see how I did. Starting off at the grip here, I've gone with a more ergonomic design that has a central beam running from the bottom of the grip up this assembly and through the fire selector pin where it's actually clamped shut and can withstand a huge amount of weight from just the rifle but mostly from the stock. On the bottom and sides of our extended trigger guard are some indentations made into the build of the guard, just like that of the real Tavor. And on the bottom of the grip comes with this little end cap piece that can be easily removed to reveal a storage spot inside the grip to carry small objects like batteries for lasers and even optics. And above that we have its brick built factory trigger present for the rifle and its fire selector. The fire selector for the military TAR-21 has three positions, safe, semi-auto, and full auto, whereas on the Tavor SAR, the only two that are available are safe and semi-auto. And just like the real gun, the selector isn't necessarily ambidextrous, but it does allow the ability to indicate exactly which mode it's in, and makes that apparent even on the other side of the gun, so whether or not you're left-handed or right-handed, you can look and see which firing mode you're in at all times. Unfortunately though, the safety on this weapon does not at all interact with the trigger because I ended up deciding to pick at least some bit of structural integrity over having too much functionality. Moving back a bit, we can turn to the magazine area for the rifle, which was definitely the most challenging mechanism for me to make from this whole build, but before we get into that, let's take a look at the magazine itself, which is a Stanag magazine, or standardized agreement and it has its three iconic grooves along the side with a 5.56 round on top and some minor details. But it does make a really clean looking magazine and I even like how it contrasts against the rest of the rifle. But okay, why was this mechanism here so weird for me? Well, this rifle was built to be compatible with AR magazines and that style of magazine normally has to seat from the catch along the left side. However, the fact that this mag release actually swings in the front 
created quite an interesting challenge for me, which eventually was overcome by this brick built release system right here. So now I have a system that when the release is pressed in, it will drop free the magazine and then when inserting will only move the side catch and not the release in the front. Also, this rifle being a bulb up design does create the opportunity of having different ways of reloading. From a simple grabbing the mag and releasing with your non-dominant hand, to a C-clamp pressing on the release and allowing the magazine to drop free as you keep your grip nice and firm on the rifle, something I've seen in a few Steyr AUG videos. Or, maybe one of my favorites, where you keep your hand on the grip, but extend your palm and thumb back to release the magazine with only one hand, leaving the other one free to grab another one ready to use. And, if you ever run into that pesky problem of your rifle breaking down on you, just simply remove that rifle and replace it with a new one, and then, uh, yeah, you'll be uh, good to go. Now, heading towards the front of the rifle, we have the standard handguard designed for the Tavor, which has a very unique shape to it and can be simply removed just by gently pulling downwards against it. And from here, we can take a closer look at the details for the line works along the sides of the handguard. On this side, we have our lines that transition to a small 1x2 in the front, but on the other side, we actually have a 1x1 instead and a circular button above that to indicate a feature that will be explained later on. But you've probably already noticed that the handguard itself has been placed offset by these jumper plates on the inside and having a seam run along the top and the side of the handguard, I gotta say though, I I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I honestly think it looks really good. And in front of all this, we actually have our barrel and muzzle brake at the end, meant to represent the same look of the SAR rifle barreling. And in the front of this, the muzzle brake is easily removable and is built to even have its venting above the horizontal axis to help control the gas dispersion while firing. Now, I've always had this concept for universal barrels that can essentially run all kinds of muzzle brake designs and even suppressors. Suppressors like this very basic one I've created right here, but it actually does have the ability to not only slide onto the barrel, but also lock down once it's fastened on. And it reminds me of something like an actual play feature on a Lego set where you could easily swap between the two different parts and it's just really fun. Scaling back to the stock of the rifle, we could take a closer look at some of the details that were past that of the reloading mechanism for the Tavor, which does include this IWI logo in the back, and some interesting displacements for the cuts and grooves seen in this area of the rifle. And extra details including the trim on the bottom that acts as the flare portion for the magwell, which works great on the real rifle, but unfortunately it doesn't really transfer over to LEGO so much. And another aesthetic feature to the stock are these QD points, or quick detach, that you see present on the stock and actually in the front of the gun as well on both sides. And I wanted to get pretty close to the same idea of attaching a sling to the rifle, just like that of the real Tavor. So, as an example, we have this gun right here, in which actually does come with its own QD mounts, as well as an IWI sling. And when it comes to my model here, I can essentially swap out the parts for different parts, and then run a railing piece on the inside of those to act as my QD points, and then have my version of this LEGO sling right here for the TAR-21. As well, there are some other functional details, such as the bolt release that sits on the bottom of the sock, and the buttstock plate here, which has some details that I have built to reveal the bolt and trigger system on the real Tavor, which can be opened by taking something small, like a 5.56 round, and using that to press in the pin on the right side of the gun, sliding the pin out, and letting the stock swivel and then carefully swiveling down the butt plate, where at this point, you wouldn't actually be able to remove the bolt based off the internal rubber band design. And even worse, it sucks when it comes to even storing items. Like, come on! I couldn't get a Luger to fit into the stock, and we almost got close enough with the Liberator, but no chance. And for the next part, we have the charging handle and bolt for the system. Now the bolt and charging handle are very unique in the fact that they're actually not even connected to each other. In fact, the charging handle itself will run loose as a dummy bolt and all the pressure from the rubber bands will only act upon the bolt. Also, if we remove the front assembly and take the charging rod out, you'll notice that the front end has the charging handle piece itself, which does cock back and forward to help give the impression of it rotating and locking, just like that of the real charging piece. And this here is actually interchangeable and can be converted over to the right hand side. 
And that is for the most part the charging handle, but if we go back to the bolt, we can see that it is still under tension and even when moved all the way back, can actually be locked down by the physical bolt catch below and when pressed up, will release the bolt. And this system is just so simple that to reload a rifle with a bolt locked back, all you need to do is just load the new mag in and your knuckles can already be in a position that allows the weapon to chamber around almost immediately after inserting a mag. As mentioned before, the charging handle can be converted, but so can the rest of the rifle too, and in fact the rifle is pretty much ambidextrous for the most part, considering the fact that you can use this both as a left-handed rifle and a right-handed rifle. But configuring this rifle to be properly left-handed does take a little bit of setting up first, and the parts that you would normally have to switch out would be the shell ejection cover and the brass deflector on the other side of the rifle, as well as the fire selector and fire selector indicator. Then moving all the way up to the front, we would need to switch out the area in which the charging handle would swap out with the 45 degree rail system attached to the other side. And just like that, we have ourselves a left-handed converted TAR-21, and I gotta say, when it comes to holding a gun left-handed, um, I don't like this. This is, this is pretty awkward for me, but I will say that if it was a choice of what kind of configuration I would want, I would definitely make the charging handle on the front sit on the left side as well as the fire selector, but what if I also kept the brass deflector on that side as well? Because I don't know why, but this type of look for the rifle kind of just reminds me of that same left-handed gun look that you see in a lot of Far Cry games, which happen to be some of my favorites. And it is just so easy to place the cover back over the shell ejection port. And just like that, now we have a regular old right-handed TAR-21. And finally, we have reached the iron sights for the TAR-21. And these sights are flip-up iron sights that you would normally see on the original military TAR-21 model. They stand pretty tall and are fairly simple to use as well, rated for close range combat. And as you've seen before, these can even fold away in the event of adding something else to use besides the iron sights. And right here we have the Lego Mars sight for the Tavor. So, the Mars sight, or what's also known as the multi-purpose aiming reflex sight, is the reflex sight being produced by ITL Optronics based out in Israel and they've worked alongside with IWI to help make their revolutionary sight for the upcoming Tavor model. Now this site right here was pretty tricky to make because of the fact that it just has a lot of things going for it. Like to turn on the red dot, first you must take this adjustment piece here, normally used to adjust the brightness on the actual site, remove that from the side, and then placing it inside of this slot will activate the red dot. And the side picture for the most part isn't necessarily too great either, but considering the fact that we don't have three stud wide window pieces available for LEGO either, I guess this was just realistically one of the best things I could do. On the side of the site, we do have a laser on the inside of this, and that can be turned on by pressing this button here, which can be both held down and toggled to stay on. The cool part is even the fact that the laser and red dot somewhat line up together, which is just awesome and totally unintentional, so I think I got pretty lucky on that part. And on the right side, we have the battery container for the Mars site, which would normally hold that of the single AA battery for the real one. However, my reflex site here only contains that of a red power brick and a little laser module that I bought from Walgreens. Now, this site is currently attached to the rail cover and is normally equipped to the rifle, but it can also be removed as well. And here we can see more of the rail system on top of that, the rear sight piece, and its gas cylinder. With this piece off, now we can actually take a look on the inside of the gun, and you can see the detail of these four slits, both cut into the sides of the gun, and the rod on the inside. We can even replace this original cover with another cover, which does happen to be this more modernized full-length rail system. This rail system right here, for the most part, comes with any new Tavor that you see on the market today, and it's a full-length rail, meaning that you could put anything on it from a reflex sight all the way to a scope even. And just like the other Tavor rail, it has flip-up iron sights as well that line up pretty much just like the other ones do too. But my friend's rifle didn't only come with iron sights, no no no. This rifle even came along with its own EOTech EXPS mounted to the very top of the rail and here we have the holographic sight with all its detail and its very famous reticle. So of course I couldn't just not make the hollow. So here we have my rendition of the sight made out of Lego and I really did want to get everything pretty close to the real one. I've added a latch to the side of the site that allows the weapon to properly mount to a Picatinny rail system, 
It also has windage and elevation adjustments, which was pretty cool to get this type of technique to work and is similar to what I did on my Sten gun, where I used these 1x4 arch pieces to create holes for the punch out area for the gun. I even added a sticker in this one spot, and frankly, this whole thing is just really not too shabby of a design if I do say so myself. We even have this portion that would contain the CR123 lithium battery, but obviously isn't powered by that. In fact, it's powered by another red power brick too, and even the real hollow site has this beautiful reticle that you can see here, but on mine it's uh, just a bigger red dot. So yeah, I wasn't really sure what to do with this part here. Even though the red dot itself is just bigger, the sight profile though is just as good as looking through the real one, which will genuinely make this just a decent sight to use and attach to any LEGO weapons I happen to make now. His rifle even came with this polymer magazine that has a few markings and details, as well as this window to see the inside contents of the magazine. And this here was pretty fun to replicate too, and is a lot more sturdy than that of the Stenag magazine. It feels cool knowing that I was successfully able to copy his gun and fully recreate it into Lego form, and they're so close in resemblance that it honestly feels like I've attached the dual wield attachment to this rifle. Imagine dual wielding these in a COD game. And speaking of video games, one game in particular to have a TAR-21 in it was Modern Warfare 2 back in 2009, which recently had its own remaster, and it's definitely been fun to go back and just see what makes this gun in particular so unique. It even has different things made up for it, like these custom iron sights that come along with the default build for the TAR-21, and the front sight reminds me of something made from Daniel Defense, while the rear aperture sight is just a simple tire piece suspended by friction from two other pieces, which really helps create this clean look for the TAR-21 iron sights. The magazine is that of a normal Stanag mag, but does come with this piece of tape that actually does secure through a pin in the front and locks the whole thing down together. Also, the Mars was included in Modern Warfare 2 and features the wire and laser pad piece that run from the sight through the sling mount hole and routes into the button area for the handguard. My model here is actually non-functioning, but in a real sense, you would definitely be able to turn on and off your laser at all times. That was the LEGO TAR-21, and this may very well be my most detailed weapon to have been ever built to date, just considering how challenging it was to make everything for this too, and the fact that I had the real rifle to build upon helped create one of my most accurate models, I think, to date. And I couldn't be any more happier with this TAR-21, and it's cool, I've actually never made a TAR-21 before. I mean, I've made an MTAR before, but I'd rather not talk about that. Also, considering all the changes that really can be made to this gun, one of my favorite configurations to make out of all the attachments available for this is this right here, which includes the suppressor, the normal rail cover with the EOTech on top, and an IWI US magazine. Well, with all that said, I seriously hope you guys have all enjoyed. Also, if you want to make your own TAR-21 and you want the instructions to that, the link for it is down below. So guys, subscribe if you want to see more historical LEGO weapons made later in the future, like, favorite, and comment if you have enjoyed, and, as always, thanks for watching and stay safe.